Trini joins us now live from the Crucible. Dave, congratulations. You're marched into round two. And, you know, we've just been congratulating you last night because last night's first session, it really did look like the shackles were off. How much did you enjoy being back out there again? Yeah, it was good. It felt great out there last night, you know, a bit of the crowd in and uh, found a good rhythm early on in the match. So I uh, felt like I'd play some good snooker and uh, I put a good little, uh, probably broke the match last night. Hi, Davis, Alan Mack here. Right. I was just thinking, uh, well played first of all, I was just thinking, it's not that often you come here and the plan comes together. It must have done because you, you played awesome, didn't you? Yeah, it felt, felt really good for pretty much most of it. It got a bit scrappy. Uh, I was lucky to come out 2-2 for the mini session uh, just before the interval there, you know, felt quite relieved. Uh, felt like I was going to play well, but little things were just going uh, against me and then Chris made a good dish and... Um, I was lucky to win that frame before the interval. That settled me down there. Dave, Steve Davis here. Uh, um, going back to that semi-final, uh, the, the Crucible. Uh, when you when you arrived here this year, you know all those thoughts flooding back. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think about that uh, that moment all the time as it happens. So uh, on the drive drive up here, I definitely and as you get past the Crucible, going to the hotel, definitely thought about it and all the good feelings as well as you know a bit of a nightmare as well but uh, really looking forward to the crucible this year I put a lot of work in so it's nice to uh, to start well but that confidence of getting to the one table set up sometimes i think that probably does make you a stronger player when you're playing in these first round matches yeah it's a, it's a brilliant experience for the what the one table here um, it's actually my biggest goal you know i'd love to win a tournament obviously but i'd love to get on that one table again and have another go at it Dave, I know you were you were pretty devastated to go out in, in the first round last year to, to Kurt, but your game seemed to go into, I think probably best described as a bit of hibernation thereafter. Um, how, did, how, did, how did you struggle and what did you struggle with? And consequently, how have you turned it around? Yeah, I was just uh, struggling with the whole COVID thing, you know. I just hated it, not really leaving the house, not seeing your mates, not having a laugh. And I just got myself into a really bad routine in life, you know. It's nothing to do with snooker, it's just that... So I was struggling so much away from the table, you know, going to play snooker just weren't helping me at all. And uh, I got out of it through speaking to a guy called Nick Davies just before Christmas, like a bit of a therapist kind of thing. And uh, it's worked wonders with me. You know, I'm really happy enough in life again and, and the snooker's improved for it. And, and in what way specifically did, did Nick help you? Because is he a sports psychologist or a psychologist? Yeah, yeah he's a sports one, but you know, he's had to listen to my rabble about other things as well, bless him. <laughs> Uh, but it's just nice to talk, you know, I'd recommend it, you know, I was dead against it, but I recommend anybody, if you're struggling with anything, you know, there's people out there that can help you. Well, that's great advice, Dave, and it's great to see you back and thoroughly enjoying it, refreshed and, and ready for another Crucible run. Well played, because it's uh, it's Judd Trump or Liam Highfield in round two, go prepare. Cheers. Thanks, bud, cheers. And great to see him, so full of life and rejuvenated, isn't it? He's a guy I first played probably more than ten years ago. And he was doing nothing in the game. And I'm watching his action and I'm saying, what is going on with this guy? Why is he not where he should be in the, the top echelons of rankings? And then, thankfully, something happened about 10 years ago and he found his game and, and, and you know maybe changed a few things around. I, I, I don't quite know, but he had he always had the talent. I, I still, to this day, I, he's the only guy I've ever played in a match. It was best of nine. And he never missed one shot. It was 100%. <clears throat> He, he did not miss one ball. He, he's a proper player, and, and myself and Steve were talking about w whether he's um, intimidating. He's not that sort of guy, is he? I no, he, 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 he's, he's up to his game, and I mean, whether or not it coincided with when the game sort of uh, was taken over in a new sort of direction, and many more tournaments were put on the calendar. Whether all of a sudden some players benefited, benefited from more play, maybe. That helped Dave. I don't know for sure, but you know, constantly playing the game, I think, is, you know, keeping in the groove is, is is a thing that a lot of players felt hard to do. So more tournaments, they were back on the in the office more often. Other players could sort of cope with only six events a year. And I think one positive message there from from Dave, because it, I think he speaks for so many who've, who've gone through some difficulties in the last few months, is that to be able to talk and to be able to find the right person to to share your burden with is so important in life, not just in sport. Yeah. You've got to be brave as a snooker player, but you've got to show bravery in that as well. And good on Dave for, for sharing that with us. And because we all have been feeling a, a little bit insecure, possibly over the last twelve months or so. Absolutely. Okay. Well.